Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to my hobby channel, Floating in Dreams, where I like to talk about all things fashion and makeup. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, you may know that I have been loving some eyeshadow palette content again, because in August I'm doing only eyeshadow palette content. However, then Catrice suddenly launched their Fall Winter 2021 collection, and I was like, what am I supposed to do? So I posted a poll asking you what I should do, and a lot of you agree with me, to get that Catrice video out ASAP. Because in case you're new here, and this is the first time you're tuning into one of my videos, hi, welcome, my name is Micah, I'm obsessed with eyeshadow palettes, but I also love talking about Essence and Catrice stuff, um, because I live in the Netherlands and we can usually get these products really, really quickly. So I like to buy whatever interests me from the new launches, and then I like to come on here and do a first impression makeup look where I throw everything onto my face. So far, all of the products that are lying in front of me, I've only swatched. I haven't put them on yet, so I don't know what these things we're gonna do, so we're gonna explore together. And then I'm going to come back here in a few months when Essence has also released their new update, because Essence and Catrice, in case you don't know, they are owned by the same company, so they're sort of run in the same way, and they update their makeup line every six months. So every six months they churn out all of these new products, and I like to tell you what I think of them. So I always like to come on here when I've tried everything and reviewed most of it to let you know my full thoughts in a few, in a few months' time. So I think, you know, before the year is out, I'm sure. Um, so I've got lots of products here. There's more here <laughs> than I could possibly put onto my face in a single video because I do have a full face of new Catrice products. The only thing I have here that is not new is highlighter. Everything else is brand new from Catrice. So let's get cracking into this video and throw some makeup onto this face. Right, so where I always like to start my makeup routine, which is actually a step I don't very often show on camera, but it's lip balm or lip gloss or something. Uh, and they've come out with this new lip plumping product and they've been doing this, uh, what's this called? Volume Extreme Lip Booster for years. And I've never tried any of these because they don't really seem like something I might like. I don't really believe in lip plumpers, but I saw this and I really thought this like minty green packaging was cute. And apart from it being like a lip plumper based on like chili or cinnamon or ginger, which are sometimes these agents that make your lips look fuller, this one has menthol in and that just appeals to me a little bit more. So I'm just, I thought we could just whack this on as a first step and then hopefully by the end of this video when I come back to the lip products that I have for you that we can see whether this did anything or not maybe we can see that on camera. So it's just, you know, doe food applicator. It's clear. It seems to have a bit of a green tint. I'm not sure. It looks clear, I think, on camera, but in real life, you can sort of see something greenish. But yeah, I'm just going to throw this on and then, and then we'll see. Ooh, feels very cooling. You can definitely feel it. Now the rest of my face has already been prepped, like I've done my skincare routine just before I sat down to film this video, so I'm ready to go in with primer. And this is a product that I think you could use as a skincare product, but it can also be used as a primer. It at least is called a primer now, um, but I do feel it has some, some sort of like skincare product properties as well. So what is it that I'm talking about? It's this one. This is their new Clean ID Anti-Redness Serum Primer. I'm not sure if you can see in the bottle here, but it's got like a very light green tint to it. It's 98% natural ingredients. It's got a calming effect and skin should feel smoother and more moisturized. So it seems to be like a moisturizing primer at the same time. And I do have to say that I tend to like primers that are hydrating at the same time. That's my favorite thing. Uh, I've already swatched it on the back of my hand and I felt that I'm not sure how much it's going to do to cover, like to even out any redness. I never really think that works, um, but it's got quite a good texture for a primer I found when I felt it on the back of my hand. So let me show you. I just do one drop. There we go. And then do you just see that it's not too runny? Uh, so I do like that. And then when you, it's just a very thin texture. 
but it does seem to have a little bit of grip to it. So it's not like it just disappears into your skin. So I do really like that. So what I think I'll just do is I'll just grab some in this dropper and just see if that's enough. I'm just gonna whack it on. Okay, <laughs> so for an anti-redness primer, it's not really doing a good job because it's making my face look more red. That's actually because I'm using my fingers to rub my skin. My skin is quite reactive, so the minute I touch my skin, it gets red. Um, but this will go down for sure, but I don't think it's green enough to do any sort of correcting, but I think it can be nice as a bit of a thin, moisturizing, hydrating primer to sit underneath your makeup. I think it can work quite well like that. That lip product, it started very cooling and now I can sort of starting to feel a bit of a tingle. So, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so, so far, so good. I don't have a new eye primer, so I'm going to quickly prime my lids and then we'll get on with the rest of the products. Now, technically the next product isn't new, but it is new to me because I decided to buy a new shade of the True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This is in the shade 10 Cool Cashmere. This foundation launched over here about a year ago and I tried it and I didn't like it um, because I felt that on my dehydrated skin, it really accentuated fine lines and it just didn't sit right. And there were days where my skin looked okay wearing this foundation, but there were also days where I felt it really didn't look all that natural on me. And I like a more natural dewy sort of foundation, even though it says that it's hydrating and that it's got hyaluronic acid. I feel this is the kind of foundation that works best if you have normal to oily skin and not so much if you have dry to dehydrated skin, which is what I am dealing with. However, everybody's been raving about this and saying how much they like it. I mean, Tati did a video on it, like right after she came back. And I was like, but I wanna love this foundation too. So maybe I just got the wrong shade because I had a shade lighter than this because they didn't really have a good neutral undertone shade. Um, like they only had like one, but that was like super fair and it was actually a bit too light. So that's why I decided to buy this shade to see if it works better. So maybe if I have a dif different shade, I was like, maybe I can make this work. So in case you've not seen this foundation yet, um, it's like a little bit runny, but it's got a good texture. Uh, and I do like to apply this with a sponge. So that's what I will be doing. So I like to just dot this around my face like this. Now for a shade that says cool cashmere, <laughs> is it very cool toned? I think it looks quite yellow, which was another issue that I had with a lot of the shades in this range is that they all pull quite yellow. Um, so let me blend this in. All right, so I think that this shade is pretty much spot on when it comes to what I need from a foundation. Like this is a pretty good shade match for me. Uh, once it's sheared out, it does look really nice right now. I had no issues with this foundation when it first goes on. It's really how it wears for me throughout an entire workday that I feel it didn't really perform very well. So I know I don't love this foundation, but I thought I could give it another shot. What is new, however, brand, brand new, is the Ultimate Camouflage Cream Concealer. Now, I think this is a reformulated or updated one because they used to do a pot concealer like this in the past. It's just that now it comes with a purple lid. It seems to still come in the same shades. I have it in the lightest shade, which is 010 and Ivory. I do think they've also extended the shade range on this concealer, which is good. You get... For those of you who want to know, three grams of product, which is not a whole lot. I think it used to come with five. Uh, I think it was called the Camouflage Cream, and now it's called the Ultimate Camouflage Cream. And I think one of the reasons why Catrice has come out with quite a few products this time around is because they are trying to reformulate a lot of things to be vegan. Um, they're really pushing for this like clean vegan vibe. Um, it's been all over their Instagram and a lot of their products are cruelty free. It's a cruelty free brand and about like 70% of it was already vegan, but now they're really trying to push 
and try and get as many of the products vegan as possible. So I think that may also be one of the reasons why they reformulated this concealer, um, because it now says that it's vegan indeed on the back. So I think that's good. So I'm just going to dab this on my under eye. Right, so that's what that concealer looks like. I've had this in the past. It was one of the first concealers I actually ever tried when I first started getting into makeup, and I really always liked it. It's a good cream-based concealer if that's what you're looking for. In fact, in terms of texture, it really reminds me of the NARS Soft Matte Creamy Concealer, in case you're familiar with that, but then at a very affordable drugstore price point. Um, I do think that now, used to come in just three shades, and now it comes in like nine, so it's still not perfect. Uh, Catrice and shade ranges... They're not always the best, but I do appreciate that now they do have some other things. Before we move on to powder, there is another new product that I wanted to show you, and it's this. This is their Holiday Skin Serum Bronzer with Coconut Water. Now, Catrice and Shape Ranges, this only comes in one shade, so it's called Escape to the Beach, and it says here on the back that it's a liquid serum bronzer for that after beach glow with hydrating hyaluronic acid. Apply all over the face for a radiant sun-kissed complexion. Use alone, under makeup or powder, uh, mix into foundation or use on top of bronzy highlighters. Universal shade. So what I thought I could do is before I powder and set all of this in place is that I can like see if I can bronze up my forehead a little bit because that's where I like to do this most. Maybe a little bit along my cheek and then I also have a powder bronzer from the same line but you guys, let me shake it up first. Let's just have a look at the shade on the back of my hand. It's a very liquidy product. I'm only taking a little bit because as I swatched it yesterday, it does have a really nice glow. Let's, let's start there. That, that I appreciate. But I'm not sure if it's like right for my skin tone. Like it doesn't look too bad in the viewfinder because you get a lot of shine. But in real life, this is just oompa loompa orange on the back of my hand so I'm a little bit afraid that it's not gonna look right it may just be a little bit too red orange leaning for what I need um, but I thought I could just take a few dots and sort of use my sponge to see how far it goes Okay, that's not terrible. Alright, so I think this looks already pretty okay for my fair skin. Like, I don't really need any more, I think. I've got a little bit going on on each of my cheeks. With a sponge, it blends, blends in quite easily, I have to say. But not to the point where it just, like, disappears. But then again, on me, I think... I've got pretty fair skin and I like how this blends in. I do have to say, of course, that perhaps if you have deeper skin, this may not really work. So that's why I want to try and see if I can use some more to build it up to see how it performs then. It blends in nicely with a sponge, I have to say. This is how far I would go normally on a normal day-to-day -day basis um, because I also do have a powder bronzer for you to try out. Um, but just because I want to show you what this product can do, let's see if we can build it up a little bit more. Yeah, so it can be built up. I definitely get a little bit more out of it right now. And what I'm just trying to do here is because I don't want it to go too far down. So I try to like pull it up into my hairline to uh, make it work a little bit better that way. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you blend it in with foundation, it also has something to blend into and hold on to, so I think that works best. I would still like to try this, like, as a primer, so after primer to put this all over my face and then, for instance, apply a very lightweight foundation over it, because I can see this being one of those, like, multitasking products if you want to look a little bit more bronzy. Um, this is what I would normally go for. Moving on then to powder, and they've got a new powder out, which is the All Matte Shine Control Powder, 
healthy look with a natural glow. So at first I was like, this just looks like they're all matte powder. Do I need this? I like that powder, but it's not my favorite. Um, is this something that I want to try because I've got pretty dry skin? But it says natural glow. And uh, I don't think you can see it here. Um, but when I swatch this on the back of my hand, like it does have a little bit of shine to it. Like it's not flat matte. So then I was like, mm, that might work. However, it comes in two shades. Like, and not even like a translucent one or anything like that. So not too sure about this, but we'll see how it goes. I like the like little lines in it. That's a nice touch that Catrice seems to do a lot. But it says here that it's mattifying, long lasting with a subtle glow to give a fresh, healthy look, healthy look and at the same time control shine on the skin. So it sounds like something I might like, but I'm not entirely sure. So let me see. This is how it picks up on the brush. It's quite firmly pressed, like I don't get a lot of kick up. Quick and easy to put on like a thin layer, layer of powder, which is really all I need on my dry skin. Um, so this is one I need to test out more to see how it wears and how it plays with other foundations as well, because I know it's, this is not my favorite, the true skin. So, so far it's still looking nice. I still like the look of this foundation for sure. So maybe getting a deeper shade might have helped. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I'd like to move on to brows then. And for brows, I've got two new products. We've got the Clean ID Hydro Hydro Brow Fixing Gel. It's vegan. Um, and it's just a clear brow gel with a spoolie applicator. But Catrice is also trying to go on to the liquid brow, stays on forever, waterproof brow kind of thing. So this is the Catrice 72 hour natural brow precise liner. Like, do we need a brow liner? I got it in a shade light brown. And uh, it's apparently for that waterproof buildable look. It's got a felt tip applicator. But I'll show you. Do you just see how watery and thin and sheer that looks? So I'm going to try and do one brow with this applicator and see if I like it. And if I don't, like if it gets too blocky, I'll just use a different brush with it because I do have a brush I can use with these kind of things. But I think I just need to try and like draw in some hairs. So let's see how it goes. So it fills in my brows just fine. But can you just see that the shade is far off? It's very, very warm toned. Do you just see that? It almost looks like my, my brow is red and this one isn't. <laughs> so I, mm, this may be one that I just like write the review on and then I'm good to go. I definitely want to check out how waterproof this is. Okay, so I quite like the fact that this is quite a sheer formula now that I've tried it on my brows. I feel that makes it a lot easier to control. I've tried a L'Oreal and Urban Decay version of this kind of product. This like wet brow thing that you need to put in and then it stays put for days. Um, it works in those two brands for sure, but I, I felt with those because they were so pigmented and the product was quite thick, I needed another brush and I couldn't use the brush it came with to put it in my brows. And with this, I feel there is no problem. Like it nicely fills in my brows. You can create quite fine strokes with it as well. Um, I just feel that the shade isn't necessarily right for me. Uh, and now I just wanna push my brows up with this hydro gel thing uh, from their Clean ID line. So to see how this is gonna go. Ooh. This may be quite a like under the radar kind of product for me um, because I feel it kind of pushes up my brow hairs quite well. So if this has all day hold, I might really like it. Um, and this is just one of those things that could be like an easy one just to throw into a makeup bag and you just have it around kind of thing. Um, so I do quite like the brow gel so far. It really seems to have like a grippy kind of feel to it. So I don't think this is one that you're gonna like if you don't like crunchy brows, but we'll see how my brows feel towards the end. But it seems to be 
a brow, brow gel with quite a bit of hold, which I do enjoy. Moving on then to cheeks, and for cheeks I've got two new products. There's a new bronzer and there's one new shade in their glowing multicolor blush box. Um, so I'm just going to throw these on. Let me first swatch these for you. Um, so the bronzer I'm going to be using is the Holiday Skin Luminous Bronzer with Macadamia Oil. I have this in the shade 020 off to the island. There's also a shade 010, but that looked very warm toned. This looked more cool toned on the website. However, then I got it in and I was like, that's going to be way too dark for me. But then I swatched it. And I have to say, like, I don't hate that swatch and it seems to sheer out quite well. And another thing, if you like that sun tan kind of scent that the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer has, I feel that both of these holiday skin products have that sort of scent to them. So this suntan lotion kind of feel. Uh, and then this blush was actually quite a surprise to me because this is in the shade Warm Soul and it looks, oh, this packaging is always a bit problematic. Uh, it looks like it's going to be like peachy, perhaps red leaning. It's not, it's a warm toned pink. And in the pan, it looks like it's going to be matte. Also wrong because you get a lovely bit of glow in there too. So this is where I've swatched the blush for you. Do you just see that it's actually really pretty? Um, so I am going to be putting these products on and the highlighter I will be using is the More Than Glow highlighter in the shade Ultimate Platinum Gaze, which is one of my favorite highlighters. For those of you that don't know what this looks like, it's right here, it's very blinding and it's very, very pretty. So let me throw these on. All right, so update on the bronzer and the blush. Uh, I like both products. I think the bronzer is perhaps a little bit more difficult to blend. I wouldn't call it patchy per se, but it could very well be that because I already laid down that other bronzer product that it's now showing up a little bit darker than I'd like to. However, I do feel that it blends well. I think I can still make this product work for sure, but I'm just gonna have to try it out on its own and perhaps with some other products just to see how it might work. I definitely don't think this is too stark of a difference, I have to say. Like, I like that it definitely does something for my face and it's not one that just sort of like blends away into nothing. So I think that's a good one. And then for the uh, blush box in Warm Soul, I really like this shade. It's a very universally flattering shade. However, for me, this kind of shade in the winter time, I wouldn't go for. Same thing with the bronzer. These for me are more like summer products. So why are they releasing them as part of their fall winter line? I don't really know. For fair skin people with cool undertones, these may not be the best. Um, but yeah, for the summertime, I could definitely make this work. And we're still in the midst of summer, <laughs> so I don't really mind. Like if they had released this like they did last year, like halfway through September, it may not have worked for me anymore. I've double primed my lids, so you know what time it is. We're gonna do eyeshadow. And for eyeshadow, they've come out with some new products. They've namely come out with another Pro Slim eyeshadow palette. Now I believe this was released and they discontinued another one. I still need to look at exactly which one they've, they've uh, discontinued. And this is now in the shade Natural Spirit and it looks really pretty. You get some olive kind of greenish leaning neutrals, and then some warmer burgundy tones over here um, with a little bit of like orange thrown in the mix. It's really, really pretty. I've already used it once because I am actually going to be posting a video next Thursday. So it's going to come your way super quickly. It's the next video I'll do after this one where I actually will have tried Instead of all five, as I had planned, all six of the Pro Slim eyeshadow palettes that have come out since released, uh, since Catrice started doing these. I will have tried all of them by then, so I'm going to do a video where I review all six of them in one giant video, sort of compare them, tell you which ones I think might be right for different people. So I still need to do one or two other looks with this one to really have given it a good enough shot. But by the time you're seeing this video, I will have already done that. 
So just know that I'm going to be showing you this palette in all its glory very, very soon. So I'm not gonna be doing a look with this yet. You're just gonna have to watch that next video. Um, but they have also released, as I had hoped, two new five in a box palettes. I was hoping they were gonna do this this spring. I was afraid they were gonna discontinue these. Uh, they didn't, they came out with two new ones. So if you're in the US, the first four that were in the original lineup, you just got, they launched, they're at Ulta. Go get them if you want them, because they're stunning. Um, and now they're doing these two. So the next one is a blue smoky look, yes. So it's grays and a blue shade. And we have 60 vivid burgundy look, which is the warm toned one. So they've come out with a new cool toned one and a new warm toned one. Yes, these are styled like Natasha Denona mini palettes. They're not the same as Natasha Denona palettes because all of these come with two shimmers and three mattes and you always get like two like creasy blendy shades and a deep shade to darken things up. There's always a highlighter shade and then a mid-toned or more colorful shimmer for all over the lid. So these are very nicely curated and they're all laid out exactly the same. Um, now that I'm thinking, now that they've got six of these, maybe I should do a video in September where I talk about all six of these where I, you know, if I do a video about the Pro Slim, maybe I should do a video with all six of these, who knows? Um, so let me give these a swatch. Of the two that I've got here, the blue one, even though it's cool toned and I prefer cool tones, this is not my favorite. Uh, and the reason for it is that these are quite thin. Like even this, it looks a little sheer. So, and also like this gray feels very buttery and smooth. This gray also feels buttery and smooth. Do you just see it has a bit of a blue undertone? And then this shimmer is also a little bit on the sheer side. So again, these are workable eyeshadows for sure. Let me swatch them here for you. But they're very sort of light. And I feel that even on my fair skin, I had trouble getting them to show up that well. And what I also think is a bit of a shame is that this deepest shade even though it's super pretty, it's just a charcoal gray and I wish it was a navy because then I feel this would have worked a lot better and it would have been a lot more unique. Like there's nothing wrong with these shades for sure, but I just felt it was perhaps a little bit lackluster, especially this shade kind of like against my skin tone, it doesn't really show up. So this is one I still want to try for sure. I'm going to do a look with this. But the one that I was most impressed with, the minute I swatched it, is this burgundy palette. And you'll see when I swatch it for you, this burgundy, sh this. It's, I would say it's a bit more rose gold leaning, especially in this shimmer. Like it's got a pinky berry tone to it almost. And then you just get like this brown and also this shade have that red undertone. So let me swatch this for you. So this burgundy shade does feel a bit drier than the grays, but do you just see how pigmented that is? Looks stunning. So here we get the burgundy. That shimmer is a lot better than the one from the gray palette. Again, we get like a rosy pinky shade that pretty much blends away against my skin tone, which is why you can't see it. And then that is the burgundy shade. Hello. And then we've got that rose gold. And then if I show you the deepest one, ta-da! So now I hope you understand why this palette gets to go onto my face today because I wanna show you that. But they've also come out with new singles and this is their single eyeshadow in 360 Golden Leaf. And the reason why I bought this, because I normally don't buy Catrice new like singles like this, but it looks to me very similar to a shade that they used to do in their liquid metal line that was discontinued like five years ago and I still have mine because I love it. Um, but let me just show you from Catrice, right? Drugstore, this retails for like three euros at the drugstore. That is a Catrice single eyeshadow. All right, so Catrice is killing it in the eyeshadow department at the moment. Uh, so let me put this 
onto my face. So I'm going to zoom you in. I'm going to put this one in the crease, blend it out with this. This is going to go into the inner corner. This is going to go all over the lid. And this I'm going to use to deepen things up. And these two are going to go onto the lower lash line. That's how we're going to play it. I already know exactly what I want to do because that's how these things play around in my head. Let me zoom you in. All right, so that would be the look that I did with the Vivid Burgundy Look 5 in a Box Palette by Catrice. I really like this look myself, like it looks really pretty. Is it fully burgundy? Perhaps not. I felt that reddish shade kind of blended out on my skin tone into quite of a berry pink leaning shade, but that's why I think it's very flattering. As predicted, this shimmer is a rose gold and a lot of the uh, shades seem to have a bit of a pinky undertone to them, but not like cool tone pink. It's more of a warm toned look for sure. I really like that shimmer for sure. It feels a bit stiff. I had trouble picking it up, picking it up with a brush, but with a finger I felt it went on really well. And also this shade worked really well too. I really like this brown shade for deepening things up and this was the perfect blend shade. So I really like how this look came together, that's for sure. Now, my next step is usually setting spray and setting spray is also what they came out with the Clean ID Hyaluronic Fixing Spray 12 Hour Hydra. Um, shake well before use, it says. This is a small 50 ml bottle and it is also formulated for sensitive skin. So let me see. Oh, it does have a fine enough mister, I think. Let me see how it goes on. Ooh. Ooh. Got some in my mouth. Ugh. Uh, all right. Um, not a great mister. It seems to like squirt more out on one side than on another. So maybe I just need to clean it a bit and see if I can use it some more. And it definitely squirts out quite a lot of product. It does feel very pleasant on the skin. I don't think this is really like a setting spray though. It says it's a fixing spray. So we'll see how this dries down. It definitely makes that very dewy sort of look. Uh, but that was a little bit more than I had bargained for, for sure. However, now we're moving on to a product that I don't normally show you in any of these videos. But Catrice came out with a new volumizing mascara. I just got the waterproof version because they were out of the regular one. So I was like, I can at least try it. This is the Lash Changer, Lash Changer Volume Mascara Waterproof Stronghold Easy Removal. Okay, so it's one of those like tapered brushes. Let me see how much I like it. And then I have a tool just in case I get any clumps. All right, so this is de definitely a volumizing mascara. This is the kind of mascara that I prefer and go for. However, it is very, very dry. So I'm not sure how long this would last if you really start using it because it could just dry up in like two months uh, or two months, two weeks, like much quicker than most regular mascaras. That's what I have found with a lot of Essence and Catrice mascaras usually happen is that they dry out really quickly, which is why the only one from Catrice that I've tried and like is the Glam and Doll waterproof um, that I like to usually top over these kind of things. Um, because guess what that does? It pushes my lashes up a little bit and it separates them. But they've now come up with this. A lash comb, a lash separator. This looks like a torture tool from hell, um, but I'm going to see if I can make my eyelashes just a little less clumpy with this. Will it work? Oh, it works. It does work for getting rid of clumps, that's for sure. And it's definitely straightened my lashes as well. 
Um, so it definitely works. It's uh, spaced close enough together that it actually does something for your lashes. But I think I will just go with my extra secure layer of the Catrice Glam and Doll in the future um, because I feel that this doesn't really do anything to push my lash or lashes up any further. And one thing I love about the Glam and Doll is that it has quite a small brush so it can really get to the roots of my lashes and sort of like wiggle the brush and push, push my lashes up to make them look a lot fuller and more volumized. So even though this is a nice mascara, I can definitely use that one up at some point. Um, but I would definitely pair it with the Glam and Doll to make sure that it sort of fits my routine. Finally, we've got some more lip products. So let me come back to you for a minute on the volume Volumizing Extreme Lip Booster. Um, what do we think? Are my lips more volumized? Perhaps there's a bit of a difference, but it's not super duper volumizing. So if you're looking for a very good volumizing product, this may not be your cup of tea. It's enough for me though. And then four lips. They have come out with new lipsticks and another one of their lip balms. So let me talk about the lip balm first. This is the Peppermint Berry Glow Lip Balm and they've been doing different renditions of this in the past releases. They come out with a new one every time. They did watermelon for the spring. They've done a hemp and mint one last year for the fall time and now they do berry peppermint and what this is is one of those color changing lip balms so it starts to react with your lips and it makes it look quite pink depending on your skin's ph level um, that's what these lip balms do i tend to like these they are very sort of moisturizing and they're very nice for like that easy sort of like barely there kind of lip look and this is the product i will be applying for you but they have come out with 10 new lipsticks. This is the line that is replacing the Demi Matte. So Catrice used to do the Demi Matte line and they're replacing it with, it's a mouthful, the Vegan Collagen Matte Lipstick. And there are 10 new shades. They range from like nudes to reds and then some other shades in between. And I've already swatched all of them on the back of my hand, but I haven't put these on yet. So I want to do a separate video where I'm going to be showcasing, showcasing all 10 shades for you on my lips as well as swatched on the back of my hand. And I will, I always do an accompanying blog post when I do those videos where you can see close-ups of my lips and really see if it like accentuates fine lines and those kind of things. So this is the red from the line, which is 080 B powerful. And I just thought I could swatch this for you just to show you what this looks like. They feel very creamy. So for a matte lipstick, it feels like a cream, not like a matte. So I'm not sure what these are going to be like in terms of wear time or anything like that, but this red looks really stunning and very vibrant. So I wanna try these on first for a few weeks off camera, make sure I have all the pictures, that I test them out a couple of times on like work days to see how they wear throughout the day. And then I'll come with to you with my review sometime in September when I've tried all of these a little bit more. So that's why today I thought I could just throw on this balm and that will also be our last product. So let me show you what this berry and peppermint shade looks like on. So there you have that shade. Uh, this doesn't do anything in terms of like volumizing or anything. It just evens out your lips a little bit and it adds a little bit of brightness to them. It's not gonna change the color of your lips completely, especially not for me, because I've got quite naturally pigmented lips. Um, so that's something that you do need to bear in mind. But I have tried the other two in this line for, for sure and I like them. They're very hydrating, they're very comfortable on the lips. And it's just a very easy to throw on sort of lip product. So yeah, there are two other products that I'm going to, um, so yeah, there are two more videos coming your way. One of them really, really soon already on Thursday, all about the Pro Slim eyeshadow palettes. And I will be including the new one. And then in September, once I've tried these lipstick a little bit more, I'm going to be showcasing all 10 of the new vegan collagen matte lipsticks. So a lot of things to still stay tuned for, I hope. Don't forget that I'm also doing eyeshadow palette month at this moment in the month of August, which is going to com uh, culminate into my eyeshadow palette collection video towards the end of the month. So I've got lots more content coming your way. I typically, typically make three videos a week, but currently because of eyeshadow palette extravaganza, I'm doing four. So there's extra videos on Saturday. So I hope you would like to stay tuned, subscribe if you feel like it, and then I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>